All right, <clears throat> trying this with just natural light today. And, um, yeah, I don't know where to start this week. I, um, I don't know where to start. I've been, you know, I had the trade sales list. A lot of the trades, the trades are starting to come in. And uh, so I'll just show you what that involves and where it's going to lead. Um, one thing that I traded for was a... Malibu Francie, and I really just traded for her because I wanted to give this body to my one of my 1987 skipper heads who was on a very beat up Malibu Francie body, but now that I have her, I might be tempted to leave her as she is, just as Francie. I might put the head on a different body. I'm not sure. She is cute. And not, not the refined mod era way, but the enthusiastic mod era way, which I know some people don't like those as much. And I Dijon rerouted one of these with blue hair. So, although for a Malibu doll, her hair is actually in fantastic condition. Most Malibu dolls I've encountered, Japan, most Malibu dolls I've encountered, their hair is, it breaks if you look at it too long. But she has nice, soft, silky, coarse, but silky hair. So that's one thing from a trade. Another thing, sort of an unexpected thing from a trade was I have a petite now and she has purple hair. And this was unexpected, so I need to work on bulking up the trade that I'm sending for this. It's to a very dear old doll friend, somebody I've known online since 2002, maybe earlier. So. I have to work on making that box nice. My upset, it looks like the camera's pointing over there. I have actually the trade box I'm sending is down here, so I know I'm... <laughs> yeah. And then another trade thing was the Create a Monster Skeleton, which I had, of course, some Create a Monsters back in the day, but I never had Skeleton. So I don't have Create a Monster body sitting around now, but I am willing to crack open even like a regular articulated Barbie body and put bony bits in. We'll see. And of course the dress is cute. So but this was also a trade bonus in the big thing I was trading for with this person was fake fur. So I can start getting into making fur wigs. You see we have gray, purple, pink. Now I have been using quite a bit of the pink, which you will see soon. And this one, which you see by the back, the way it's knit, the three colors. I'm not sure, I mean, you can, this could be a very interesting multicolor wig, or I might just make a thing out of it. I mean, when it comes to making things, the reason I wanted this, even though there's plenty here left over to make wig for small dolls, I wanted this so I could make a tribble. So that's the first thing I thought when I saw that fluffy, scruffy gray it was tribble. And this is, I followed, I searched online for various tutorials on how to make a tribble and now the sun is out. And there was one that claimed to be the way David Gerald's production notes said they were actually made, which is basically two elongated ovals connected in the bottom. Flip them right side out, sew them, leave the end open, flip them, stuff them, and stitch that end up. So this went together super fast, and if I had more fake fur, I might make more tribbles in the future. So, so when it comes to fur wigs, I will say I got the offer to trade for this fur like a day after I had placed an order with Funny Lori for a fur wig for one of my older dress me dolls, one of the vintage dolls. So I decided that I wanted this doll a long time ago. I thought she should have a proper mohair type wig because this is the kind of doll, if you have much familiarity with the dress me dolls, basically they take a handful of mohair and just glue them on the doll's head. This might not even be mohair, it might be saran, but when these dolls are not taken care of very well and as old as they are, the fiber is usually pretty unpleasant. It's definitely not shiny and pretty anymore, and again, it's just kind of glued on the head because these dolls were cheap to begin with, so not a lot of care. So I had wanted to give this doll nicer hair, and Funny Lori had a coupon, so I went for it. 
and she had this fiber that looks very mohair-like. I had been thinking um, mint or aqua, <laughs> yes, for this doll, trying to coordinate with her eyes. So here she is. I do, the, the wig fits perfect. I will say that I had to request, since this is not a standard ball jointed doll size head, I requested a, it's six inches around, requested a six inch wig. Fits her perfectly. Great job, Lori. And she wears, this is a Barbie sized dress that I had made a while ago. Also with cloth given to me by Pleasant Old Men in Pink Shirts. Again, a lot of what I do, I've, I've talked about this online, I know I've talked about it here, I like to take the cast offs and make things with them. So actually ordering this wig was kind of a splurge, unusual for me, actually ordering a thing with intent instead of just figuring out what I can do with stuff I had. I'm trying to get more intent in my doll stuff, but it's so much fun figuring out what I can do with what I can find. It's going to take a while for me to really move to doing everything with intent, if I ever do, because making is fun. Anyway, so there was a little bit of a hiccup and I uh, got an extra wig from Lori, and it was bonus, it was not what I expected, so I thought, well, I don't have a doll in mind for this, who should get it? And I finally decided that MNC Toys Betty Teen that John had sent, I've had the head sitting on a gymnast Barbie body that I'd heat form the hands and I actually started, one thing I try to do with gymnast, the old flat foot gymnast Barbie bodies is I try to carve the feet down so they can be a little bit smaller. So I got these feet small enough at least to fit into these live shoes. So anyways, this is a fluffy white, straight white fake fur wig that I have put up a little bit. And I like her like this. I had been thinking I would reroot her in aqua, but I do like her in this hair. And the more she wears it, the more I look at her in this hair, the more I like her with this. Again, it is glued on because it wasn't made for this doll specifically. The fit's not perfect, but if I put it on the right doll, I'm sure it would fit fantastic. So that's this wig. And the thing is, so I had all that fake fur and I wanted to start making wigs. Now I know I can learn to do a proper doll wig and I know I've seen different ways. There's can be two sides in the center or side back, side back and front center. I mean, there are all sorts of ways to put doll wigs together. That's why I didn't start with this because Yes, I sew, but it just, my brain's not quite into the wigs. But I have had this book for a few years. And you see the size of the hair? Let's see if I do it this way. I'm not sure if I'm getting glare. I keep forgetting to flip the camera around so I can actually see what I'm doing. Anyway, see the huge hair. See the huge hair. Enormous hair. And so this book is 1974 copyright, and I have put scans of this on my Flickr. Not the whole book, but just the pertinent to us parts. So big hair. And um, which would be how to make the wig base. So basically what you do is you wrap the hair around the head, first side toward the head. The first thing you do is you figure out which way the hair wants to lay and brush it the other direction. Because this is the book of the bouffant, you want to make this hair as big as possible. So the first thing she instructs is, notice the hair grows in one direction on the fabric. You should work against this direction instead of with it. This is important to give the bouffant top more body. It actually says bouffant. So, and then you put it, wrap it around the doll's face. You've just cut a rectangle of cloth. Because the dolls in this book are basically, they're kind of like pose doll heads, but they have plastic faces instead of that sort of fused nylon that pose dolls have. But the head itself is styrofoam. So this has you sticking pins in to hold the styrofoam in place. So pretty much every time it said pins in here, I either just glued or actually stitched it on depending on the head of the dolls I've experimented with so far. So what you do is after you've got it wrapped around and attached to the head, then you run a bead of glue around it, and she has you use the toilet paper. <laughs> Just roll up some toilet paper and put that around the, on that bead of glue. And then after that's secure, you fold the fur up, and that's going to give it some outward volume, because again, this is big hair. 
And then you're stuffing more toilet paper in. And again, she has you stick it all closed with pins, but I stitched it up. Just a whip stitch in the back and then a running stitcher on the top and pull it tight and then whip it in place. And that's just the first layer. Her example doll only has one layer, but all of these back here. You then take a circle of it, stitch around the whip stitch around the edge, pull it tight and stuff it up, and then you she has you gluing, but I stitched it onto the dolls to make bigger and bigger hair. Now you do see a lot of the instructions here are to make the curls, which are a huge part of these dolls, and they are really hard. I spent a while one evening trying to get the curls right. I will say a big thing is she has you using something called resin spray to hold everything in place. And the first one of these dolls with the big hair I tried, I used gloss sealer and that seems to hold it in place. But there is no way I'm bringing a can of gloss sealer in here and squirting it on this hair constantly. So I eventually just put some gel glue on a comb and was combing it that way. And that worked for the hair, but again, not so great for the curls. I'm not sure if it's just that I'm using the wrong materials or if I'm trying to make the curls too out of narrow strips. These dolls are also much bigger than Barbies. Or I just need a lot more practice to get good at this. So anyway, using the inspiration from this book, this was the first doll I did. And she is, I put the hair around her head and I just glued it on. And I flipped it up. This is not stuffed with toilet tissue or I figure a more refined way to do it would be with quilt batting or polyfill. It's not that. It's in this... So it's a base layer and then I did sort of, instead of the full bun, I did sort of a D shape with I whipped the front half. I'm trying to do this fast because I have a lot of stuff I want to get through. And I whipped it in place so it was folded over so you wouldn't see the right edge and then I ran a running stitch to the out back part of it and gathered it up so it was flat in front and curved in back. And I stitched that on and then this is the doll, like I said, I used gloss sealer to be her hairspray. And it's, it's not that it's never going anywhere, but it's not going anywhere today. And then I made it her dress and necklace really fast and the glasses are old Volks photo etched glasses. So that gave me the idea that these wild wigs are something that I could do. So while I was making this doll, I had two inspirations just from this doll. One was to do a wig proper, like the book said, stuffing it with toilet paper. And another was, I would started putting the fur on her and I thought, she looked good, but she was green. But then I said, no, 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 I'm not starting over and painting this doll green. I'm not taking the hair off. I like the way it's going. Also, I think this doll is composition. I don't think that she's going to show up in the video. The just odd quality that her plastic has. It's not like any other plastic. It looks painted, but it's not. So, but in my stash of other Dress Me dolls, I had a couple like this. This is cheap blow molded, or I think her head is styrene. Let's see, the face just doesn't have quite the character of this one. And you can see the remains of her original bow hair. It's glued on still. So I had two of these. This one obviously is not green. The other one, the whole arm was like a completely different color. So that's why I decided to make her green. And then I went ahead and did the hair and we got her. I have not painted her eyes I mean, there's not a lot to paint on these dolls. I was able to put the airbrush layer paint on her thin enough that you can actually still see her original eyebrows and lashes through the paint, so that'll make that much easier to paint those. And then I'll need to paint the lashes black and give her lipstick. And you see, these were the best curls I could come up with. I probably shouldn't have used them at all, but I did. So I want to give her a little more froofy. <coughs> Sorry dress and maybe flowers and beads and ribbons in her hair too and this again is two piece of the, the base piece wrapped around again there's no stuffing inside this one and another piece on top I think I just did a round piece not a d-shaped piece although actually no yeah 
her, the basic piece on her head was actually a D-shaped piece that I made for another wig and decided not to use it. And I saw, well, it fit on her head and it will, so. So that's her. But the other thing this inspired me to do, like I said, was to do one the proper way, the way the book has you do it, with adding stuffing inside to just make it bigger and bigger and bigger. And we have her. Her name is Cindy Kate, after Cindy... Wilson and Kate Pearson of the B-52s because what else are you going to have a beehive this big named after? And this again is, there's the base tube of hair, fur, and then the toilet paper to give it volume on the side, pulled up, stuffed, stitch clothes. And again, the book has you styling the second piece before you put it on top, again because you're just gluing stuff together, but since I'm sewing everything together, I went ahead and stuffed the second piece. Again, it was just a circle with the edges drawn in. Stuffed tight, pretty tight. You see, it's, it's even pretty, it's even, it is smaller than this, but anyway. And then after that was attached, I started brushing it all together and then I combed through it. You see there's still this huge glue slick in the front that I have actually been working on lessening. I go over it with a damp washcloth every day or so. So, and this is, this is my only hold to Cara Jenny. It's, she was a gift, <laughs> and her Emmy Moon, who gave her to me, had painted her eyes and lips a pinker pink than they originally had been. And another note I want to share, these are shoes from that curvy and tall shoe pack I had last week. And so, as you can see, the low heels fit Jenny really well. It's a bit of a squeeze getting the sh feet into the shoes. And I pulled my Blythe and my Power Rangers knockoff Lika body cow body and the shoes don't fit perfectly but for us in America who don't have access to a lot of Asian doll shoes but still tend to end up with these Asian dolls the flat and the curvy and tall shoes are a valid option I almost bought the regular Barbie foot shoe pack today because a lot of those were flats and then you could have I could have tried those but I didn't because the colors and the styles so anyway, that's fun. But then I said to myself, all right, that's a lot of pink. Why don't we start playing with that purple fake fur? And the first thing I want to do is in December, I airbrushed a whole doll of purple. But because this is not a doll who had a hair, original hair that I wanted to keep with the purple, I knew I was going to have to reroute her. So she was languishing because I don't, like rooting, I may have mentioned that, rooting. So, but then I thought, well, what about purple hair and a purple doll and a purple beehive? And I have not had a chance to paint her face yet, but here she is. It's a more um, <laughs> relatively refined and sensible beehive. Again, this is not stuffed with anything. This is just, there's like a really small circle of fake fur drawn up in the edges and stitched to the top. So I always get nervous painting over paint, especially I like this sculpt so much. I'm always really worried I'm going to ruin it. But as you can see, I didn't do a great job airbrushing it. There's still a lot of the original live skin tone visible and scraped off. So I'm going to try to be a little looser and more relaxed with painting this face whenever I get around to it. But that is the sensible beehive, and then I did one more purple fake for hair, and I wanted it to be not quite this ridiculous, but still kind of ridiculous. So that's this one. And there is some stuffing in her hair. So that's the difference in volume between this and this as far as the base goes. I did put some stuffing in the first layer, and then stuffing in the second layer, and then I brushed it all up, and I know this probably should be off-center, but because I know I've seen a lot of old beehive hairstyles with the little off-center ponytail, but I thought this was pretty um, period accurate too, and I'll put a bow on it, and I'll probably repaint her. I'm gearing up toward repainting faces completely, but I haven't been in the mood to quite do that. So that's my fun with fake fur. And what else? I did change the clothes on Hip Hoodie. 
and he's so stiff. I didn't even realize his arms went out to begin with. I hope, I'm hoping that eventually he can find a, an articulated body. And I do need to paint over his eyes because I haven't taken a picture of him. You probably can't tell. His, his irises just aren't even the same size from eye to eye. And also his hair, some of it is glossy, but then there's like this big streak of dull hair. And he has this cut on the back of his neck, and it's actually echoed on his chin. He's still a great guy doll, <laughs> but he's going to need some work. And then the other doll that I bought last week was that the new Made to Move African American soccer player. And I'm pretty sure I told you I was going to give that body to the 2016 Holiday Barbie that I thrifted. And I did, but I couldn't leave her the way she was. She had, you know, the big fluffy hair and the pearly pink pastel lipstick and just a very center glance kind of bored look. Also, I realized that head sculpt has teeth molded into it, even though that mouth was all paint in one color and no tooth paint at all. So I decided to change that. I decided to make her just more my style of doll. And so here she is. Um, I did not strip her original paint. I just painted over her. And so I could probably take alcohol to what I've done and wipe that Wipe it off and just leave her original paint. Something else I discovered is her eyebrows, even though her hair's in the way. Her eyebrows are not symmetrical. So that like gives an instant air of snark, and I'm sure you're getting tired of me saying how much I like snarky dolls. So, and I would love to find a pair of half glove hands for her, grip hands. And <laughs> you can tell I like a doll when I actually break out my Dr. Ken. Um, bandages because I'm getting pretty low on those. I actually back in the 90s I actually bought both versions of Dr. Ken, the Ken version and the Jamal version and one of them had two packs of the little fake metallic stickers and so I actually have one sheet of them that I have not used yet but and there's like two left on the sheet that this came from. I don't know why I love these bandages so much keep thinking if I were more um, entrepreneurial, I'd find a way to mass produce these the way Mattel made them. It's on a it's on a metallic plastic, so they're actually somewhat removable and reusable. And I'm really getting distracted by doll bandages now. Anyway, so her name is Eleonora. I she is fantastic now. She her place on the shelf is up here next to Marty and they just sit and I know that they're talking about people. So that's that. And then today I thought I would get out and get stuff done early and come back and actually at least paint her since there's not a lot of painting to do. Like I said, trace over the eyebrows and the eyelashes, put some black on her molded eyelashes and give her some lips, and maybe a heart-shaped mole somewhere. But there were computer problems. And it took me a long time of researching and dealing with computer problems, so I, I had thought, you know, I'm not going to go to the thrift store today. I'm going to have all this time, and I can come home, and I can work on the paint on these dolls. And, and then I had the computer problems, and that got wiped out, so I decided, why not go to the thrift store? And I was in there and I was digging around the random toy table, looking at all the sort of kibble at the bottom, which is mostly connects pieces and broken Rubik's cubes. And, and I, was, I had the thought, my favorite thing to find is doll shoes. Wouldn't it be great if instead of throwing Barbie shoes on the random toy table, they just put them all in a bag and put that bag on the shelf? Guess what was on the shelf? Prime 1990s Barbie shoes! Of course, 
These shoes don't fit modern Barbie feet. The feet have changed just enough, but I have enough older style bodies and double-sided tape and hosiery and stuff that I can make these fit. And I have not poured this out and looked at everything yet. I will take a good picture when I do. But I can tell that there are more match it, matched shoes than unmatched shoes. Of course, I think it's hilarious. These two shoes right here, this pink one and this pink one, I have already exactly that color and that style. But still, I'm very, very happy to find these shoes. And there was attached, this was $3, but it was also um, attached to these two very 1990s Teresa dolls. Which she's a little, a little, um, I don't even know if she's wearing, oh, she is wearing a shirt under, I didn't check. I had, I'm pretty sure I had this in the 90s too. Uh, two, two layers, very 1990s shirt, very late 90s shirt. Anyway, she's a little too frosted pink, late 90s, but her, I like, she might get a body, I'm not sure. And I think this is Generation, is this Generation Girl Barbie's jacket? Because it has the charm, I know the Generation Girls had the charm. So anyway, that was a productive visit to the thrift store and it's been a productive week because we have giant hair now and I have working on a new skill and I'm trying not to go out and start buying all the long pile fake fur I can find because I'm not sure how much longer I'm going to be enamored with doing this to dolls but this is really fun and I will say these two since they are vinyl doll heads, I actually sewed the fur to their heads going out through the, the holes, rooting holes in the hairline. So this is not going anywhere until the vinyl rips, but hopefully that won't happen anytime soon. So that's it. I think that's everything. I know it's a lot. I know I've rambled. Ask questions if you have them. I'm always happy to answer. Thanks.